Hello guys and girls and everybody else. Um, welcome to my channel. We're doing some more videos. I might be doing a uh, trade for a pair of my uh, speakers and so I wanted to make the this video for us. Um, and we're talking about the review of and the opinions of the Utopia uh, micros. These are um, focal speakers. Um, they are with the beryllium or BE line. We've got the uh, manual right here. You might not be able to see it, but it says Utopia beryllium line. Um, these are the smallest speakers, I believe, that they sell in the Utopia line. Um, and these are their bookshelf speakers. Uh, Focal does recommend that this is paired with a subwoofer. Uh, and originally these sold for quite a bit of money. Um, around $8,000, $7,000, I believe, was the price. Um, they're about uh, 8 to 10 years old. And uh, they have this famous beryllium tweeter in them. Uh, beryllium is an element, if you don't realize this. I believe it's a metal. Uh, the largest group of elements, which is metal. Um, and beryllium is, is, is a rare earth metal that's quite expensive, I guess. They say, in, the, in the manual, they say it's twice as much as gold um, or more than gold uh, per gram. And that's due to the fact that it's very hard to uh, mine and there's not a lot of resources in it. And it explains a lot of this in this nice manual that I got with, a, with them. I bought these on auction uh, for around uh, three grand and I uh, got a good deal on them. So I was very happy with them. Uh, they're extremely accurate. Uh, one of the most accurate speakers I have. Not only that, but this case does not resonate. So when the music stops or the sound stops, the sound stops. There's no carryover, no little distortion, no little edge to the end. It just abruptly ends. Um, and with the Beryllium Tweeter, I noticed the same type of great deal of accuracy is with it. Uh, you know, the vibrations of the string when you're listening to it, uh, you can hear every little tiny detail of the string vibrating. Um, and when it ends, it ends. Um, when someone stops the noise, stops the sound, when the editor cuts it off or whatever, it, it, it just ends. I mean, and they're so extremely accurate. Uh, I was telling the guy who, who who's most likely going to trade me for them. Uh, we're going to trade some other speakers for them, uh, possibly. Um, I told him that the experience of listening, actively listening to vocals, and I'm talking only about when you're sitting there paying attention to the music that you're listening to. But when you're actively listening to these they can be a little exhausting due to that accuracy. Um, they don't, you gotta focus just the amount of detail there. It, it, it comes in so much layers and it's overwhelming and it takes a lot to just pay attention to it and to try to consume it all actually. Um, whereas a lot of the other speakers, they're a little bit more rounded out the sound um, and a little less clear and a little less tiring when you're actively listening. When you're not actively listening, you don't notice it. Um, and so if I'm just sitting here playing cards or playing a game with a girlfriend, uh, I don't notice it. I don't notice the extreme accuracy. I don't notice the other things. It's only when I'm listening, actually sitting there listening, do I start to notice how, how good these actually are. Um, which is generally the case for everything that I'm doing when I'm listening to speakers. Um, the detail comes out at when you're when you're sitting there trying to listen to the music. Um, the beryllium cases are very nice made. The woofer is very nice. Uh, they don't drop as low as I'd like, which is part of the reason I probably I'm going to trade them. 
My other complaint about it is this is a $2,000 tweeter and it is exposed as you can see. If someone br brushes up against this or it bumps into it or one of my many animals bump into it, uh, it will get damaged. The newer uh, focals have covers over them, but these do not. And uh, it's very stressful having these speakers under those conditions. I'm worried about them tipping. I've got them on a bow and will can stand here or something else happening to them. And having animals, uh, it just, it, 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 it's a little too stressful for me as, as much as I would like. Um, and it's one of the main reasons I, I want to trade them um, for this new speaker. Uh, I'm getting another uh, speaker made in French with it. It's a powered speaker. I'll put the comments in the YouTube channel about what I'm potentially trading them for. Uh, and um, these are eight ohm speakers. They're about a hundred watts. Uh, Focal again recommends a subwoofer. I'm not opposed against the subwoofer idea. Actually, I think it's a great idea. Um, Many of these other speakers have woofers on them and even subwoofers on them. Uh, and they can dip down really low. Uh, but the subwoofer and the tweeter are not in ideal locations. And I would love to take this Bowen Wilkin 802 and take this mid-range and tweeter off of this and then replace my, sub, my woofers, my subwoofers somewhere else in the room because they're not quite the same uh, they don't work quite the same and they need to be in different positioning. So having a bookshelf speaker handle the mids and the highs while having a subwoofer with it you can place around the room or a pair of subwoofers sounds ideal to me. Also subwoofers are generally cheaper um, than many of, the, many of the bigger speakers and that's because they generally don't have the details that we hear, we feel them. Um, so, uh, it's really, we also can use different class amps, class D amps with subwoofers that give us a lot of pow power very efficiently and do a very good job. And because the frequency is so low that we're playing, uh, even if the D class amp would be noticeable on the, uh, on the tweeter, which I'm not claiming it would be because D class amps have become incredibly good. Um, you wouldn't hear it in the subwoofer. So having a D-class panel amp or something like that just makes a lot of sense. It's a lot more efficient, a lot cheaper, and you can really get a lot of power and put the money in the enclosure or the driver itself. And so I do kind of support this philosophy. They do make larger pairs of these and they get very expensive. They make one that's, you know, as tall as my room, um, with multiple mid-ranges and lower drivers and subwoofers that can handle the full range. Uh, I've seen them up to $18,000, even on the used market for these speakers. They're incredibly high-end speakers, and I would love to own them, but I don't think I would pay that amount new. I think I would buy this one, and I would buy the subwoofer with it, um, because unless I have a giant room this is going to do everything I need it to do. So again, the Focal Utopia BEs. Let's get around the side of this and the back of this so that uh, I'll, I'll turn it for you guys so you can see the back of it um, in the light, the ideal light. Got to be very careful with everything. Um, but here's the Micro Utopics. Utopias. They are just incredible speakers. You got, you know, my pure oxygen copper going to them, uh, speaker wire, that's the best that I buy. Um, I don't have any speaker connects running right now. Uh, I ran out of them, so I just kind of threw the cord in there. But the two connectors are very cool. Uh, this part here uh, unwinds. They look like they're some type of metal or something. They're not gold, but they look very nice. Very heavy duty and everything. Uh, the sides are wood, this wood grain, very beautiful speaker, I think. I'm not complaining about the overall appearance. 
Uh, definitely like the phase lining and everything of the woofer, pulling it forward a little bit. Uh, overall, one of the most accurate speakers I've ever played. Um, I have to say, they're comparative to the Mark Logan uh, ethos that I had, the, the electrostatics and their accuracy and how quick uh, they resolve. Um, I have to say they might even sound a little bit more clear than the Martin Logans. Uh, they're definitely in the range of the Magnapans. Uh, the beryllium is one heck of a material. Very hard. It's like the third hardest material uh, uh, element on the planet. And they just can make it very light. And that allows the diaphragm of the tweeter to move very quickly, which gives us that accuracy. Um, so, you know, exotic materials galore are in these. A very expensive speaker, but one of the best you could buy on the used markets. And I can't discourage you at all from them. Uh, just warn you that the tweeter is a little bit fragile. And so if you do pick these up, you want to deal with that uh, and have an environment that's safe to them. Um, if you don't, it's, I hear the tweeter is about $2,000 to repair, which is a big hefty fee. It's one of the most expensive things. In the packaging, they give you an envelope. If the tweeter gets damaged, they tell you to pick up the pieces of the beryllium with the tape, put it in the envelope, and send it to them. Uh, apparently, beryllium can be toxic to human health. Uh, not in the state that these speakers have them in. Uh, that's what vocal claims, not me. Um, but as soon as they break, uh, there is a potential pr issue for it. From what I understand, if it becomes airborne or if you would braid them, if you, uh, you know, get little dust particles of beryllium in your lungs, you might have a problem. So having them in a solid state like this, just fine. But once they break apart, uh, you definitely want to take good care of them and make sure to follow the process of cleaning them up. Um, that's about everything, I think, about these things. Great Speakles, Focal Utopia, Beryllium line. Uh, great uh, speaker. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like our review, and more. Thank you.